This will be part two in our discussion on cosmology, and it's a continuation from video number five. In video number five, I put forth the premise that as far as I can see, no matter what cosmological model you come up with, you've got to land in one of three different places. You either have to be an eternal uncaused, you have to have a temporal uncaused, which is the current standard model, or you have to have a temporal caused. I put forth the idea that the temporal caused model was the most logical and plausible explanation. And by, when I said that it was caused, I said it was caused by a very powerful metaphysical being. The responses that I got back were this, everyone said that I totally reject the temporal caused model. But nobody wanted to come forward and, and, and endorse either of the eternal uncaused or the temporal uncaused. Everybody kind of wanted to, to take an agnostic position and say, well listen, I don't know what happened. Well let me just say something at that point. If you don't know what happened, then how in the world can you reject any of the premises and be intellectually have a standing. It seems very convenient to me that you can absolutely know that the temporal cause is not possible, but be unwilling to take a, a stance in the other positions. It's kind of like when Copleston said to Bertrand Russell, one way to ensure that you will not lose is to not sit at the chess table. Another uh, illustration, if I may, is J.I. Packard. J.I. Packard said there's two kinds of people. There are the people that are walking the street those people are living life, they're making commitments, they're making decisions, and then there are the people that are sitting on the balcony of their houses, peering down at the street and refusing to get involved. If you refuse to take a position, but you would reject the temporal cause position, you are a balcony sitter, you are a squatter. And I would say that your reason for doing that is because you don't want to make a commitment because you know that you can't sustain it. And the inability to sustain it will affect your presupposed worldview that there is no God. So you, you refuse to make an intellectual commitment. I was uh, given several ideas uh, that was responding, but nobody wanted to come forward and present the argument for themselves. If this was a debate format, I would simply present my argument in video 5 and I'd sit down and I would shut up and I would wait for somebody else to present a more plausible argument. Everybody said, no, I don't agree with number three, but nobody wanted to come forward and argue for the other two points. Some people threw some ideas. One person come back and say, well, E equals MC squared. Well, that is not even applicable. That is a one an equation to express relative theory. Now, you can take relative theory, you can apply it to cosmology, and you're going to wind up at the standard model. So that is no help to us. Other people said things like, well, what about an eternal energy field that already existed? Or what about inflation theory or what about multiverse theory? Okay, I would have liked for you to present them yourself, but I just, as a theist, I don't think I have anything to fear here. So what I'll do is I'll present the arguments as I understand them. Quantum, quantum vacuum theory or oscillating vacuum or fluctuating theory, all the same thing. The, the idea here is that energy has always existed. There was a sea of energy or a field or strands of energy that have always existed and something happened in those strands. One theory goes that there were two bands of energy and as they collide together, the subatomic particles stick together, make atoms, and out of that comes the universe. Well, there's a, that's a, a theory. It's on the table. It's open for discussion. One of the problems with it is this. The standard model and our observations from Hubble and others lead us to the conclusion that time, space, matter, and energy all came into being at one point. Secondly, if you're saying that energy's always existed, you're, and energy and matter are almost synonymous, uh, according to Einstein's theory, they're almost synonymous, so that all you're doing is you're going back to argument one for an eternal uncaused. The problem with argument one, eternal uncaused, is it doesn't fit what we seem to observe in the universe. I'll use these terms, it doesn't fit the evidence. Also, it's an argument for a quantum theory of gravity which doesn't exist yet. That equations haven't been worked out, so this is purely speculation. Regardless of it being speculation, you're still back to point one for an eternal uncaused. That has problems when you bring in the laws of thermodynamics. 
Okay, what about inflation theory? Inflation theory is just an adaption of the Big Bang theory. Inflation theory says instead of everything happening and expanding over time, it happened a lot faster at the beginning and maybe slowed down gradually as you extend it out. So now you're back to point number two with a temporal uncaused. You're back to ex nihilo, everything coming from nothing. Now the most interesting probably is the multiverse theory. The multiverse theory is cool. It's, but it's science fiction. When you think about the Matrix and all those kind of things, now, there are scientists out there that are provo you know, saying, hey, this is a possibility. It is a possibility, but problem number one with the multiverse theory is they can't even come up with an equation yet to even begin to come to a solution. So at this point in time, multiverse theory is complete science fiction. Now, if you say string theory, M theory, unification theory, all you're saying multiverse theory. Let's go a little bit more into the multiverse theory because that seems to be everybody's favorite. I guess we have some science fiction fans out there and that's cool, that's fine. Multiverse theory says there is a multiple dimensions or multiple universes. Okay, if you're talking about a dimension outside of the physical universe, how come it can't be a metaphysical dimension that I proposed last time? That would be my first thought. Um, secondly, you're proposing things that are not empirically provable. That kind of sounds like supernaturalism. Uh, so I don't think the multi-voice is going to help the non-theist much at all, other than to give him a, a nice excuse not to be honest. Back to multiverse. Even the multiverse theory, we still haven't escaped, whether it's eternal uncaused or temporal uncaused. You still haven't escaped those conundrums. The, the thing with the multiverse theory, the whole point of the multiverse theory is to create more material so that, we, that, that the odds of the universe existing as it does will increase. For example, the odds of our solar system existing in the form that it does now would be 1 in 10 to the 10 to the 26th. That's a bigger number than we can fathom, but the odds of the universe existing is 1 to the 10th, to the 10th, to the 123rd power. I'm not a mathematician, but I do understand this much. The difference between this and this is phenomenal. If we can't fathom this, there's no way we can even begin to fathom that. That's the whole point of the multiverse. The point of the multiverse is not to escape the temporal uncaused or the eternal uncaused. The point of the multiverse is to multiply the amount of material and the amount of stuff we have to work with to increase the odds of getting the universe we have now. I think Oscom's, Oscom's Raider, Razor might come into play there because you're creating a co more complexity of the problem in order to find a solution. Even doing so, again, you haven't escaped eternal uncaused or temporal uncaused. You still have to go back and answer that. You still have an eternal matter or eternal something or you have uncaused from nothing. That's what everybody doesn't like about the standard model. Now when you argue against the standard model, keep in mind you're not arguing against my position. You're arguing against the scientific model that's held today. And in the history of the 20th century cosmology has been an attempt to unseat this model. Perhaps someday they shall, but right now that's the standard model. No matter what you want to talk about, you want to talk about the quantum vacuum, you want to talk about inflation, you want to talk about multiverse, you still come back to an eternal uncaused, you still or a temporal uncaused. What about what Hawkins is working on right now? Well, I'm not a physicist, I'm not a mathematician, but I'll make a very simplistic explanation of it. When you think about the standard model, that's what you're thinking about. You're thinking about at some point all things we know came into being and they began to expand. What Hawkins is trying to do is get away from that starting point, that singularity where everything kind of doesn't make sense, and create a curved or a non-singularity. Well, there's a multitude of problems with that, but let me give you the, the problem that they confess to readily. Mathematically, it doesn't work. When you create these kind of models, you use things that are called imaginary numbers. And what the imaginary number is, is kind of like a cheat. It lets you go ahead and try to formulate some equation and then you have to come back later and put the real numbers back in it. Well, that's where they're having the problem. When they come back to put the real numbers back in it, 
It just doesn't work mathematically. It falls apart. It doesn't matter. In my, in my point of view, it doesn't matter. The question here, you still have a temporal uncaused. You still have a beginning point. It's just not a singularity. They want to get away from that singularity because that singularity of something coming out of nothing and it being uncaused is illogical. If it's caused, then that feeds into what I would say is a theist. The temporal caused. That's the whole point. You're either going to have an eternal uncaused, which violates the laws of thermodynamics. I'll give you an example. Let's say you want to try to play quantum vacuum or multiverse with an eternal uncaused. We know this, what? Laws of thermodynamics that over time things slow down and things cool. Take the same application and apply it to a black hole type universe that falls into itself. There is no physics and there is no math that allows us to bring that thing back to life. There is no physics and there is no way around the laws of thermodynamics that once something dies or stops or cools down, it's able to regenerate more heat and more energy to create something else. So you're gonna, if you're going to hold to the eternal uncaused, you may do so, but at the cost of going against science. If you're going to hold to the temporal uncaused, the standard model, you're going to have to go do so at the cost of going against logic. You're going to say, well, everything we know came out of nothing. Do I even have to go into the impossibility of that? Let me just pose one problem. If everything came out of nothing, how come you and I have never seen anything come out of nothing? How come things aren't popping out of nothing all the time? So you're going to have to either be unscientific or you're going to have to go against logic. Or you're going to have to give up your presuppositional worldview and you're going to have to embrace the fact that the most plausible explanation is a metaphysical very powerful cause that would lead us to point three, the temporal caused, which I'm saying is the most plausible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth.